Hello and welcome to this Easy Composites video tutorial. In this series, which is probably the most ambitious we'll ever take on, we're going to be answering the question that we get asked more often than any other, which is how to make your own carbon fibre vehicle panels like this car bonnet that you see here. In the tutorial, we are going to be showing you every single step along the way, including making the moulds, making the parts, bonding the parts together, trimming and finishing to enable you to make your own incredibly light, incredibly strong, and perfectly finished carbon fibre panels. We really hope you enjoy it. The first step in our process is to take this original steel bonnet, which we're using as our pattern. We're going to add barriers all the way around the outside of it so that when we make our mould, we've actually created a mould with a flange on and that flange will add stiffness to the mould and it will also give us plenty of opportunity to position the bagging consumables and things for the resin process. Before we actually apply any barriers to this part, we're just going to take the opportunity to put down a full background layer of release agent. We're using Easy Lease, which is a chemical release agent. And of course, this is what's going to stop the gel coat from sticking to the part. But while we've got the bonnet in this state, it's much easier to ensure that we've got everywhere covered. And then we'll probably do another application later on. Making barriers can be tricky. The technique that we've developed is to use corrugated signboard for the barriers themselves and then bond those onto the underside of the part using hot melt glue. So the first thing to do is to use masking tape to actually make a template of the edge of the part and then we'll transfer that onto the signboard and cut the barriers themselves. So with the masking tape all the way around the edge of the part, it's a case of just marking up where we're actually going to make the barrier pieces in separate sections. And we also, uh, at the same time, just draw on the angle that we're going to cut the, uh, the barrier sections at and, uh, and finally number them so that we can identify them. So we're going to have a cut line here. We'll have a cut line coming off at this angle here. Then this will all be one piece and we'll have cut lines on the barrier about there. The masking tape comes off the part extremely easily, so we're just going to start it off and then cut it into the parts that we've identified, being careful not to, uh, to rip the tape. So we're transferring this line here onto the board. We know the, the angles that we want to make the barriers at. Once we've marked out all these templates, we're just going to cut them out with a sharp knife and then we're going to be able to position them around the outside of the part. We're working on the underside of the bonnet now where we're going to be positioning this barrier. Now the way we're going to do that is we're going to apply masking tape uh, to the edge on the underside of the bonnet here um, and then we're going to be using hot melt glue on the masking tape and then on the barrier. The reason for the masking tape is so that this barrier is quite easy to remove when we're done with the process. So we can get started with that with the masking tape. We've got masking tape all the way along this top edge so now it's time to use hot melt glue gun. I'm going to just put a, a bead of glue all the way along the top edge and then stick the barrier to it. We've now flipped this bonnet over. Just before we do the, the wax, we're actually going to use a release tape to actually just seal these, uh, these joins or a breaker tape. And that's just going to prevent, again, any uh, of the gel coat from running down into the gap. So we just take the tape and tape the seam. And because it's a release tape, the resin and the gel coat won't stick to it. So the next step is to use a yellow filleting wax to actually create a bead all the way around the edge between the bonnet onto the flange. And what that will do is stops the gel coat from running under and locking in and also gives us a nice smooth transition so that when we've got the mold, the parts themselves are going to release nicely and they're not going to get caught up or uh, mechanically locked on this edge. So we've put the, uh, the filleting wax all the way around the outside now. 
Um, and you can see from this close up that what we want to do is always be sure that when you put the wax down, you've got what's called a draft angle. And that's going to mean that when we remove the part or we'll separate the part and the mold, that there's not going to be a mechanical lock. We're now ready to put the proper coat of release agent onto the bonnet. So we're going to apply two coats of the Easy Lease all the way over the surface of the panel. Now the filleting wax doesn't require a release agent and in fact will actually get dragged off by the release agent if we're not careful. So we're not going to apply any release agent to the wax. We are going to apply the release agent onto the barrier itself just in case there's any contamination. It is made from polypropylene so it shouldn't stick but just in case it does we're going to uh, give it a coat over as well. We've now left this a good half an hour to fully dry off and we're actually going to apply two coats of wax all the way over the top of this uh, of the steel bonnet part. Now usually we wouldn't use a wax on top of a release agent. A chemical release agent generally works on its own. However in the case of going from a pattern to the mold itself we want to be absolutely sure that we're not going to have any problems with the release and so having the the chemical release agent and the wax although it's a slightly unusual combination is going to ensure that we do have no release problems. We're now buffing off the wax having left it about five or ten minutes and uh, you just really want the lightest possible pressure when you're doing this just using a microfiber cloth here and just skimming over the surface and you can see the shine start to emerge. Right so we've now left the wax to fully harden off which is around about half an hour or something like that and so it's actually time to make the the mold itself. So we're going to be using a very versatile tooling system called Unimold and the Unimold system comprises a, a tooling gel coat which is a vinyl ester tooling gel coat. Now the reason we're using vinyl ester is that that's actually compatible with polyester resin, vinyl ester resin but most importantly for us epoxy resin and it'll guarantee an excellent release of the parts out of the mold uh, which you wouldn't get with a normal polyester gel coat. Um, the Unimold system then uses a coupling coat which is reinforced coupling coat uh, we actually add a lightweight chop strand mat in with that um, which forms the, uh, the connection between the tooling gel and then the, uh, the tooling resin itself. Applying the gel coat now we can do this in either two thin coats or one thicker coat. We'd be targeting in a single thick coat of around about 0.8 millimeters. Now for a bonnet this size we're looking at mixing up around about 700 grams of gel coat. If you mix up too little and you come up short you could always mix up some more. Uh, we're using normal MEKP catalyst and ratio of about 1.5 to 2 percent. So for 700 grams of the, uh, of the gel coat that would obviously be 14 grams at 2 percent of the catalyst. Applying the gel coat is totally straightforward covering it and we're going for that approximately 1 mil which is a reasonably thick application. We've now allowed this gel coat to cure to the right point. It's certainly very much firmed up uh, but it's still got a very slight level of tack which is the right point for a gel coat. So in the Unimold system it's now time to add the coupling coat. As we say we've got a light chop strand mat. We're using a 225 gram here. The, this is really as heavy as you would want to go at the coupling coat stage. You could go lighter and we're going to be wetting this through with the, uh, with the coupling coat. Again, this is catalyzed at a ratio of about 1.5 to 2 percent. We're going to be catalyzing it at 2 percent. And we're going to use a full kilo on, uh, on this layer. When the coupling coat has been fully catalyzed, it does actually change to a darker color so you can tell it's ready to go. Now, when you're working with the coupling coat, it's just like any chop strand laminating. So you apply the resin to the part first and then drop the glass mat down onto the resin and then wet it through from above. The light chop strand provides reinforcement at this early stage but because it's a light mat it's very easy to get it down into the contours of a mold which ensures that you're not going to have any voids between the gel coat and the, uh, the main uh, tooling reinforcement and the coupling coat itself chemically is designed to act as an interface between this vinyl ester tooling gel coat and the, uh, the tooling resin itself.
We've now allowed this coupling coat to cure. In our case, it's taken around three hours and it's very much firm to the touch, but it's got a slight tack and that's the right point for us to go on with the main reinforcement. Now, because we're using the Unimold tooling system, we're going to be putting down all of the reinforcement and resin in one hit. The uh, Unimold tooling resin is a filled resin system, so it's very important to thoroughly mix up the contents and we'll also give it a quick stir to make sure that any sediment or fillers thoroughly mixed into the resin. With the resin catalyzed at between 1 and 2%, we've used 2% because it's only a small mold, we're then going to apply the resin all the way over the surface and start building up this chop strand mat. So we want to work reasonably quickly and get it all down in one hit. We've now allowed this to cure fully overnight. As you can see, the colour of the mould has changed to a lighter shade, indicating that the exotherm has taken place. And so we're going to turn the mould over and without removing the bonnet, we're going to look at making the moulding for the inner skin. Okay, so we're now going to remove the temporary barriers that we put in place. And you can see why we use the signboard it's released perfectly from the uh, from the tooling gel coat we're going to be using the flange from the upper mold as the flange for the lower mold and so what we're going to do is leave most of this filleting wax in place but we're just going to ensure that it's nice and smooth so that it, it acts again as a fillet between the uh, the flange and the inner mold that we're going to make so we're looking at the underside of the bonnet now We've got lots of holes, as you can see, that have been cut out, die stamped out of this inner skin. We need to blank all of these off, which we'll be using release tape for. And we've also got these studs here that were for the hinge mechanism and the latch at the front. Now, because we're happy to sacrifice the bonnet in this case, we're going to grind these off and again, grind the latch mechanism off. If you didn't want to sacrifice the bonnet and you want to keep it usable, then you could blank these off using plasticine or something similar and then make the mold around them. But for simplicity, we're just going to grind them off. So applying the release tape to mask off these holes on the underside of the bonnet, we just pull the tape tight over the hole and press it down firmly. So where we've ground off this latch mechanism, we're going to tape all the way over this using the release tape and the tape should be sufficiently strong that we won't need any other reinforcement over that area. So we're applying the Easy Lease Chemical Release Agent all the way over the surface of the inside of this part and very importantly this time around on the flanges as well. We'll be applying two applications of the Chemical Release Agent and then we'll be following up with two coats of wax making sure on this occasion that we thoroughly wax the flange. Where you can see the upper moulding meeting the lower moulding and we've got this gap here, we need to thoroughly fill that with a wax fillet to prevent the tooling gel coat from running under there and sticking. So we just put in a large bead of wax and then smooth it out in just the way we've been doing elsewhere. So if we just take a quick tour now of what we've done before we put the gel coat on, we've got release tape over all of the catch mechanisms. We've got any interior holes we've filled with release tape again and we've just cut those to be nice and neat. On these areas where we've got a bit of undercut on the actual steel of the bonnet we've completely filled that with filleting wax as we did with this awkward corner and you can also see how we finished that middle edge. Okay so we've just mixed up a new batch of the tooling gel coat and we're just going to apply this all the way over the surface of the inside of this mold just like we did on the top mold. Again we're going for that target 0.8 millimeters of thickness which is a reasonably thick brush application. 
Now that the gel's cured, we're just going to put down another coupling coat exactly as we did before. Here again we're using the 225 gram glass, but another excellent option for the coupling coat is something even lighter, like a couple of layers of an 80 gram. So the coupling coat is now cured off and it's time for the main reinforcement again. Just like before, we'll be applying all of the reinforcement and the tooling resin in one session. We'll be using four layers of the 450 gram chop strand mat. So that's the underside of this mold finished. So we'll allow this to cure fully overnight. And then tomorrow we'll be trimming these and separating them. This mold's fully cured now. So we've marked up a trim line all the way around the edge, equally spaced to where we know the bonnet comes to. And so now we're going to just uh, trim them apart to separate them. We're going to be using a jigsaw cutter to trim the two moulds and we're using a permagrip blade which is a tungsten carbide blade in the jigsaw. With the mould fully trimmed it's now time to some extent for the moment of truth and what we're going to do is separate the upper and lower moulds. So to do it we're going to be using a chisel and trying to insert it between the two layers of gel coat and then just tapping that in with the hammer. I think we can hear the moulds releasing. So we're just going to insert lollipop sticks now. That's sounding good. So that's our upper bonnet moulding done now and it's just time to remove the, the bonnet itself from this lower tool. We'll be looking at doing this underside moulding first because it's actually slightly more complicated than the upper moulding. So the first things that we'll do are pretty self-explanatory. We'll strip off any of the filleting wax that's on the underside of the moulding. We'll also be uh, looking, taking off any of the release tape and finally if there's any blemishes such as this one here then we'll just be filling some gel into those areas. You'll find that a chemical mould cleaner like this will quickly and easily strip off the filleting wax and any other contamination from the mould surface. So this area that you can see here I think the paint actually wrinkled up on the uh, on the underside of the bonnet and it's left this this blemish here so what we're going to do is chisel out all of the paint and uh, and some of the gel coat so that we've got some fresh material and then we're going to put some new tooling gel coat into this blemished area and sand it smooth. So to make a repair like this what we do is we mix up just a small amount of the Unimold tooling gel coat but we add a few drops of wax additive and the wax additive prevents the gel coat from staying tacky on the surface where it comes into contact with air like a gel coat would normally do. Once the gel coat's hardened up and you can see that the uh, wax additive that we included has meant that there's no tackiness here then we can start wet sanding and flatting. So we flatted this out nicely now using the wet and dry paper. We're just finishing it off with a 1200 grit before we go on and use polishing compound which we can either apply by hand or as we're going to do using a polishing wheel. Although both of these tools are now pretty much ready to use as they are, to give this a really professional finish, what we're going to do on this top mould is give this a wet flat all over with a 1200 grit and then we're going to polish it 
all over using an intermediate polishing compound like this Merca T10. The reason for wanting to give it that flat on the surface is if you just catch the reflection here of the light you can just see a very very slight texture to the surface and that's partly print through from the uh, chop strand mat underneath and other just surface imperfections on the original bonnet. We've now polished both of these molds up to a high standard and so that actually concludes the first part in this video series. In the next instalment we're going to be looking at using both of these molds to produce the parts themselves using the resin infusion process. Really hope that you've enjoyed this video. For more information or to purchase any of the products that we've used in this video please visit our website easycomposites.co.uk